Hello and welcome back to Badger Lodge Garage and this my 1969 Reliant Supervan 3 and we're back with sheep again. In this video I'm going to take this thing for a... I was hoping they would have been moved out of this field by now. And they're off, oh ha ha. Not interesting to you, go away. So in this video, we're going to take it for a drive and I'll try and give a bit of an overview and um, if anyone's actually interested in plastic three-wheeled cars, you'll find out some more about it in this. So without further ado, let's get into it. So to get things clear from the start, this is a Reliant Supervan 3. That's how Reliant sold it and that's all it was called. Although it does get commonly referred to as the Reliant Regal Supervan 3. Which is not wrong either to be honest because the saloon car that this was based off. Ooh, a Range Rover Classic. So to make things simpler I'm going to refer to this as a Reliant Regal. Um, because that's basically what it is. And there'll be some purists screaming at me, I'm sure. But this is the predecessor to the Robin. The Robin turned up in 1973 and that's the one that everyone remembers. Uh, this was before that. It has a four-cylinder 700cc engine and that was the biggest that they fitted in these, producing a mighty I think it was 39 horsepower. Not the horsepower wrong, it's 30 horsepower. The predecessor the, uh, to this, the, the Regal 325 and the Supervan 2 had the 600cc engine. This was sporty in comparison. Is it any good? No. So this was built during the heyday of Reliant. The 1960s was a boom for them. They, they just grew due to largely the amount of people that had motorbike licenses and wanted to buy a car. God, grief. Because you could and still can if you've got the highest level motorbike license, drive one of these on a motorbike license, but at the time, you had any bike license you could buy a car so the point of these is even though they are effectively terrible it was more comfort on a winter's day than you had riding your motorbike to work with the potential risk of death and hypothermia the heaters in these work really well and also because the bulkheads made of fiberglass the heat from the engine just comes through. So is everything else, like the noise and the smell, but uh, you know, you overlook that when, you, uh, when you've when you just spent a lot of money on a plastic three-wheel car because it's better than your motorbike. So back to where I was. The Regal Saloon was known as the 330 Regal, which literally stands for three wheels, 30 horsepower. So the question that everyone always asks is, does it fall over? And the answer really is no. Um, it would if you tried hard enough, I'm sure. But I drive this thing hard and I can barely cock a wheel on with it. Whoa! So, as, yeah, this is pheasant season, they're all trying to die. That little four cylinder is coupled to a four speed manual gearbox driving the rear wheels for a live rear axle that's very stiffly sprung and it does make for quite a nippy drive. It's despite the lack of horsepower and capacity, 
the Reliant all aluminium engine revs hard and it does get this thing moving and that's because it doesn't weigh anything either. Don't forget that this had to be under a certain weight to qualify as a tricycle or a motorcycle. Um, which I believe Reliant did do some slightly dodgy things when trying to get them to qualify. Oh, there's a tree in the road. Splendid. Well, get on your side of the road then. Local. So you might say the drivetrain on this is wasted on a three-wheel plastic car because it is beautiful. The gearbox is snappy and quick. The engine's revvy and torquey. It does what you want it to, and it makes a really nice noise. A lot of people swap to the later 850s for the sake of parts. Um, you don't really get much of a performance improvement speed-wise because you're still coupling it to the same gearbox and rear end. The, the ratios aren't that different. Although you can put the later 850 box in if you edit the mounting a little bit and that will um, give you the 850 ratios on the box but you're still putting it same, through the same rear end. And you'd also gain synchromesh on first gear which is neither here nor there really. It's uh, most cars, most British cars from the 60s and 50s didn't have synchro on first it's just something you you didn't need well, why would you need you don't go into first unless you've stopped the gearbox is incredibly short shift something that everyone always notes about these once they've got past the abject terror of thinking they're going to fall over and crash and burn in a ball of fire ride quality is nearly non-existent Handling is, as you'd expect, a three-wheeler, let's be honest. But the steering is incredibly responsive because you've only got one wheel and it's quite light, but also at the same time somehow manages to feel quite direct and planted to the ground. How that works, I haven't got a clue. Uh -huh. As you can probably tell, there's no door cards on this one and also the doors are the wrong colours in comparison to the outside. And that's because once I badly painted the outside I got bored and have yet to pluck up the motivation to be bothered painting the rest of it. I've even made the door cards, I just haven't put them on. So I bought this van, sight unseen off the internet, from a chap who I later found out deals quite exclusively in Reliant. Um, but I just sold a Land Rover, and being the glutton for punishment that I am, I was browsing on the internet, and these came up. And if you live in the UK, you probably know that this is the same model, the, the Supervan 3, that featured on the sitcom Only Fools and Horses, Del Boy's van. So I knew of their existence. I'd previously seen him and thought that would be an interesting thing to own. So I saw this one for sale and if you've looked at these in the past you'll probably appreciate that they are not two to come by. These do command some significant money if you're buying one that works. This one came up at a price that I thought, well, it was still too much for a plastic three-wheel car. Let's put it that way. But the engine was seized, it had been sat in a field for 24 years, and it looked atrocious. There was multiple holes in the fiberglass. It had rear windows in it that were made of perspex and completely ruined. And the interior was gone. With carpet was like, you know, crawling on your hands and feet on a forest floor. Honestly, it's like riding an enraged 
bull with her, then you stuck a cattle prod up his bottom. That's how I describe the ride. Also, I haven't fixed that door properly, so it just slams down against the bottom sill every time you go over a bump. Hence the drastic amount of noise. The constant din from the back end is the back end. The crown wheel and pinion is ruined completely. Uh, it needs new crown wheel and pinion, basically. There's no other way about it. Uh, but in order to do that, you do have to, well, my word, that's a big hole. Locks up, there we are, fell down that one. One day I will have to change the crown wheel and pinion. And um, not quite as simple as just dropping the prop off and pulling the dip out. Due to this being quite an old fashioned design, even for the 1960s, the, uh, the axle actually needs to be split to get to the inside. So, um, I'm just choosing to ignore that for now. And I'm going to pretend that I can't hear it screaming at me. I have even filled it up with the thickest sort of oil, Lucas oil stabiliser, you know, that, um, well, it's like treacle basically, or golden syrup. And it made no difference to the noise whatsoever. The only way you can stop the noise is sort of coast and find the point where the teeth aren't quite meshing and then, you know, it's quiet. But that's not very often. So in summary, this is a plastic three-wheeled van with 30 horsepower, no comfort whatsoever, smelly, noisy and uncomfortable. So would you say that makes it any good? No. Not by today's standards. By today's standards, it is atrocious. I mean, genuinely god-awful. But in the 1960s, when a lot of people didn't even have a car and you just had a motorbike license this would have been like a Rolls Royce you cannot compare this to modern cars modern safety standards because if you crash in this today you will die there will be blood and guts and they're just your body would explode I never intended it to be a concourse restoration either. It was always, uh, let's see what we can do with this without going crazy. And I think I succeeded in that, really. Um, it is not a concourse restoration. It is still in need of a lot of work. But, it is fully road legal, everything that works is meant to work. If I put this in for an MOT tomorrow, it would pass. And uh, that's really the important thing. So to conclude then, 700cc four-cylinder engine powered plastic three-wheeled van. Is it any good? No. Not by today's standards. But by the standards of the 1960s, and by motorcyclists who had no other choice, it was fantastic. And played a major role in getting Britain as a whole on the road. And even today still manages to somehow serve a purpose. And in my case, far too many miles with far too much stuff in the back. And just as a final point of note, Reliant as a company, managed to outlive the majority of the British motor industry, carrying on all the way up to 2001 as still a British-owned company, which is pretty good going. They say there's a fine line between genius and madness, and I think Reliant managed to walk it quite well, right till the end. Sad state of affairs for the British motor industry, really. 
But as always, thank you very much for watching. And if you were interested in this, I might even do some more in-depth stuff, a bit of underneath and see how it goes, you know, see how what makes it go. But until then, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in a future video.